Hi and welcome back to my devlog series. Today is Monday and I've just started off the day by working on a math assignment, but I just finished up the first task, so I've got about one and a half hours before I have to head off for my part-time job. So hopefully before I head off, I'll be able to get some work done. The plan for today is to make an enchantment system so you can enchant your swords and weapons with different elements. I could do this the hard way and make a design for every single weapon with every single enchantment, but that would be super time consuming, so we're gonna go for a bit of an easier solution instead. Here you can see the enchant method. All it does for now is change the color to the appropriate enchantment type, uh, but later on I'm gonna make it do a lot more than just changing the color. So with that being done, let's test out if it actually works. So we're gonna go ahead and enchant it with fire, and as you can see, it makes the sword red, which is exactly what I wanted. And it also seems to work fine with ice and lightning, and we can essentially enchant any weapon that we want to. But now I have to head off to work, and I will continue tomorrow. It's Tuesday, I just finished some math, and I'm now gonna work a bit more on the game. So we have an enchantment system that works fine, now we need to add some particle systems to make things look good. So we're gonna need a fire, lightning and ice particle system. I already showed how I did this in my day in a life video, so if you want to see more in depth you can go ahead and check that one out. Uh, but here you can see all of the three effects on the sword. You can even enchant a sword three times and get all of the three particle effects, which looks pretty awesome, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to be possible to obtain such a sword in-game. I, I might do it, or maybe not, I don't really know. But now we need to work on some impact effects, because currently it looks a bit lame when you hit someone with a mighty fire sword and nothing happens. So we're gonna make some impacts. Now first off, I made a fire, then I made some ice, and also a lightning impact. These effects will spawn whenever you hit someone with an enchanted sword, which gives off a more enchanted feeling, I guess. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. I'm gonna go hit the sack now because I've got work early tomorrow, and then I've still gotta work on my math assignment, so I probably won't have too much time to work on off the sticks tomorrow. It is Thursday, my dudes. Sadly, I was super busy yesterday on Wednesday, so I didn't really have time to work on the game at all. But today I've got some more time on my hands, so let's get to work. First off, we need to fix the trail behind the sword. It doesn't get the right color when we enchant it, so it looks a bit strange. For example, the ice sword could end up with a fire trail, which is obviously not right. So we're gonna have to fix that. So the trail color should now be correct, whenever you enchant a weapon it will get the trail color that is appropriate to the enchantment. But there is another problem with the trail and that is, it doesn't depend on how fast the sword is moving, it will only be out for about 10 frames after you attack. This leads to some weird results as you can see here and it doesn't always show the trail and sometimes it just shows it for like 2 frames and it's just a bit strange. So we need to find a fix for this and make it so it always shows if the sword is moving fast enough. So here you can see the new and improved trail, it looks much better and it will depend on how fast the sword is moving. So if you're above a certain threshold then the trail will always show and if you're below that threshold then the trail will not show. So now that the trail is in place, let's work on the status effects. So I want all of the swords to have different status effects. Uh, for example, the ice sword is going to slow down enemies by placing ice shards on the enemies. And the fire sword should burn enemies over time. But we're gonna start off working on the ice shards. So I've done some very basic implementation. It now spawns a blue rectangle on the enemies when you hit them. But as you can tell, it looks a bit whack because the rectangle literally spawns in the center of the body part that you hit and it will always spawn with the same rotation and in the same position so it looks really bad. So now I've made it so the ice shards will spawn with a random rotation and also a bit of a random position. It will still spawn on the body part that you hit but it will spawn a bit off, maybe a bit up, a bit down or to the sides. And as you can also tell it will now slow down the player that you hit with the ice shards. This will reduce your movement speed and also your jump height. But currently the shards will stay forever so I need to make them shrink and then pop after a while. And here's what that looks like. Now all we need to do is make it so whenever an ice shard pops then you get your movement speed and jump height back. 
This is super easy because all we need to do is make it so when the ice shards pop, the movement speed and the jump height will be set back to normal and everything should work fine. Or not. But now it's getting pretty late so I'm gonna go hit the sack and hopefully fix this issue tomorrow. It's Friday and we're gonna continue off working on the status effects. So the problem yesterday was that once the ice popped things just started getting weird but I have fixed that now and once the ice shards pop then you are back to normal. I should also probably make some actual ice shards instead of using turquoise rectangles um, but it will make do for now. I've also worked a bit on the fire effect, basically it's just like a small flame that will burn out and eventually explode just like the ice shards. But they don't deal continuous damage yet, so I need to implement some sort of damage system so that there is a point to setting people on fire. So instead of continuous damage, I've just gone with a very simple solution, which is making the flames do damage once they burn out and explode. The flames don't deal too much damage, but it's definitely enough to kill someone if they're on low HP. The only effect we need to make now is the lightning effect. I've had a lot of feedback about how to implement it, and I think the most common one is to have the lightning strike nearby enemies, so it kind of jumps from the first enemy you hit to other enemies in nearby proximity. First off, I just worked on making the lightning actually bounce between players. This wasn't too hard to do, you just have to kind of check who the previous player was and then just jump to the nearest other enemy. Then I tried to actually implement it with the sword and I, I think something went wrong, I, I think. But after a while I got it working and now it will travel between players whenever you hit someone with the lightning sword. It doesn't deal damage yet though so that is something we're gonna have to fix and also we have to make it go away after hitting like 3 or 4 enemies. And here is the final result! Whenever you hit someone with the lightning sword now there will come a lightning shock out of it traveling to nearby enemies and dealing damage to them. For every jump it will deal less damage and it'll go away after 3 to 4 jumps. I've also quickly made it so that the status effects will only have a 40% chance of spawning so that you can't just abuse the lightning or the ice or the fire. But that's gonna be it for today, I'm gonna go hit the sack and I'll continue tomorrow. It's Saturday morning and we still got some things to do with the enchantment system so let's get to work. A lot of you guys have commented that I should make it so you can enchant all of the weapons and not just the sword, but as a matter of fact you can already enchant all of the weapons, it just looks a bit strange so I need to make it so you can enchant all of the weapons and make it look good and not just the sword. And here's what it looks like now. So basically the particle effects will adjust their size based on how big the weapon is. It's a very simple solution but it works fine. All we have to do now is make it so you can actually enchant your weapons in game. What I've been thinking is adding some wizards that will spawn on the map and then they can enchant your weapons for some gold. Here you can see the wizard, he will enchant your weapon for you. The reason he is wearing a runescape hat is because I haven't made the art yet so that's what I'll be doing next. So here's just a quick wizard hat that I painted in Photoshop and I will now go ahead and implement it into Unity. And here we go! The wizard will now spawn with a random element and he can enchant your sword for you. Currently it's completely free but I'm probably gonna make it so he charges you like 50 coins or something for the enchantment and then it should be good. But that's going to be it for today, I'm pretty tired so I'm gonna go hit the sack and continue tomorrow. It's finally Sunday and I will be spending most of the day editing together this video and then just chilling out a bit. Massive shout out to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon, especially NMU Gamer and Soap Turtle. You're all amazing, thank you so very much for the support. I've also gotten insane amounts of fan art on my Discord server, which is absolutely amazing and I appreciate it a lot. And if you didn't see your fan art in this video, it's probably because there's so much fan art I can't fit it all in one video. But I'm doing my best to include everyone and I'm saving all of the fan art, so I do have all of it, but it's just hard to fit it all in one video because there's so much of it. I also want to mention that I will be super busy in the coming weeks, mainly because I have my exams coming up and I just have a lot of assignments and schoolwork to do, so hopefully I'll be able to put out one video every week, um, but I might not be 
able to, so if you don't see a video one week, that's probably why. I might also join Ludum Dare 44, which is coming up this next weekend, uh, which is basically where you create a game in 48 hours, which I think would be very fun to participate in, so I'll be trying for that and hopefully um, I'll have something to show. But I think that's going to wrap it up, so I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Smash like if you liked it, smash dislike if you didn't, and I will catch you in the next one.